As I talk to young people around the world, I am impressed not by the diversity, but by the closeness of their goals, their desires and their concerns and their hope for the future. This world demands the qualities of youth, not a time of life, but a state of mind, a temper of the will, a quality of the imagination, a predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the life of ease. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. That was, of course, uh, some extraordinarily powerful images from this past week. And those were the words of Robert F. Kennedy, who delivered those words in Cape Town, South Africa, in 1966, uh, when the State Department, the White House, everybody in Washington did not want him to go down to speak out against apartheid. His message was simple. It was the young of South Africa and the young of the world that would ultimately prevail and end apartheid there. He would be killed two years later from the date of that speech, but it was the young that grew up and helped end apartheid. And now, of course, Mika, we're looking at young voters, uh, yeah. future voters, getting engaged in a way that we haven't seen in quite some time. And um, uh, what's the impact? Well, they're, they have been using their voices in the most profound way. Their voices were fueled by rage, by fear, by knowing that this now impacts all of them every day. And then in the future, the next shooter could be at their school. And that right now there's nothing in place to protect them. And I don't think anything that the president is proposing or that could happen right now will be enough. These are baby steps, and they will be cut down by the NRA in some way. But it could happen at the ballot box, and it could be in the hands of those young people voting in the midterms and the next presidential so election. we only have a minute left. I will say quickly, they are making some progress in the state of Florida and mm -hmm. Congress as well. Uh, final thoughts, Jeremy. So. There's a lot of reasons to be cynical about gun legislation passing, but one thing that is noticeably, demonstrably different this time is that this moment has coincided with a surge of activism on the left. And these kids have found their voice through that, 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 that I think, and that may make a big difference this time. Yamish. I think that this generation is ready like no other generation to fight social media and fight online. They are not going to be trolled in the same way. They, are, they know how to react and they know how to retweet and be smart about how to combat people with this actor story is one example of how right. they got rid of that. One of, the, one of the things that stuck out to me in watching these kids was the ones who came out of those meetings in Tallahassee saying, I went to these doors, I knocked on them, they didn't have time for me. What is wrong with this system? And I think that if they can hang on to that, you know, yes, this was a tragic thing that happened to them, but they have the potential to real, make real change. And then the next day, they were talking to Republican leaders who understood they couldn't close their doors to them. And I'm going to say, every time that they are attacked, and I saw some attacks this morning uh, from uh, gun supporters, all they do is make those young Americans stronger and help their cause. Oh, well, that does it for us this morning. What a week. Thank you so much for being with us this week. Uh, please keep the people of Parkland, and especially the parents who lost their loved ones, their children, in your prayers, Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage right now. Thanks so much, Mika. Thank you, Joe. Good morning.